Esterification is a condensation reaction between an alcohol functional group and a carboxylic acid. Condensation reaction is a type of organic chemistry reaction that involves the production of a small molecule, usually, and in this case, water. Esterification is a reversible reaction, which means the newly formed ester can react with water to reform the reactant, that is the carboxylic acid, and the alcohol. In the previous video on esters, we discussed that the structure of an ester consists of a carboxylic acid part and an alcohol part. This information is useful because we can use it to determine the exact carboxylic acid and the alcohol that is used to produce the ester. For example, the structure of propyl propanoate consists of three carbon atoms in the alcohol part and three carbon atoms in the carboxylic acid part. This tells us that it is produced from propanoate, the alcohol, and propanoic acid, the carboxylic acid both of which contain three carbon atoms in the molecule. Using the same approach, butyl ethanoate is formed from butanoyl and ethanoic acid. Esterification is naturally a very slow reaction. So usually a catalyst and heat are used to increase the rate of reaction to produce the ester in a shorter amount of time. Concentrated sulfuric acid, H2SO4, is the go-to catalyst, as it lowers the activation energy of the reaction by providing an alternate reaction pathway. Heat increases the rate of collision between molecules and provides more energy to the system so more molecules have enough energy to result in a chemical reaction when they collide. Both effects result in a faster reaction. Besides being a catalyst, concentrated sulfuric acid also provides another benefit. It has a dehydrating effect so water is removed from the reversible reaction. This causes the equilibrium to shift to the product side, that is the right side of the reaction, to increase the amount of water. And this is according to Le Chatelier's principle. By doing so, the amount of ester produced is further increased. Therefore, the use of concentrated sulfuric acid not only increases the reaction rate as a catalyst, but also the ester yield. As discussed earlier, esterification is a condensation reaction whereby a water molecule is produced along with the ester. It is important to note that the water molecule produced consists of the OH group from the carboxylic acid and the proton from the alcohol molecule. This also means that the oxygen atom in the ester molecule always originates from the alcohol. When performing an esterification reaction, it is crucial to keep in mind that the heat should not be supplied by a Bunsen burner. As the naked flame in the present alcohol, which is a flammable substance, poses a huge fire hazard. Therefore, the Bunsen burner is always replaced with a heating mantle to reduce this risk. Furthermore, heating promotes the loss of volatile compounds, that is the alcohol, carboxylic acid, and the ester as they evaporate into gases. This is a problem because we want the reactant to remain the vessel so they can continue to react to produce the ester, which we also want to preserve as that is the goal of the reaction. To resolve this problem, we cannot simply place a cap to close the flask as this would create another problem whereby the pressure builds up in the flask, which can ultimately lead to the breakage of the material. The solution to these problems is using reflux. Reflux refers to connecting a long glass column to the opening of the flask, which allows volatile substances to ascend without building up the pressure in the flask. To prevent the volatile substances from leaving the reaction vessel, a condenser is set up around the column such that when the cold water flows through the condenser, it is able to absorb heat from the volatile substances in the column. This causes them to condense, and as the substances return to liquid state, they descend down the column due to gravity. The cold water usually enters the condenser at the bottom and exits as warm water at the top. This is so that the flow against gravity prolongs the time during which cold water can absorb the heat and increases the effectiveness of the condenser. Therefore, in summary, 
Reflux allows for faster reaction, that is through heating, without losing volatile substances and the pressure inside the flask from building up. This is a very critical reaction condition that we always implement when producing esters from alcohol and carboxylic acid. Besides heat and reflux, esterification is usually performed using a round bottom flask, which allows heat to be absorbed more evenly within the reaction mixture. Boiling chips are used to avoid a phenomenon called superheating. Superheating occurs when the mixture is heated above its boiling point, but no boiling occurs. While it may seem beneficial for the substances to remain in liquid form, a superheated solution can suddenly boil at any time, causing a violent phenomenon called flash boiling. Thus, boiling chips are used as a safety measure to prevent superheating from happening. Since esterification is a reversible reaction, the mixture at the end of the reaction will always be a mixture of ester, the reactant, and sulfuric acid. To isolate the ester, we'll be using a separating funnel and the help from sodium carbonate. When sodium carbonate is added to the mixture, it neutralizes the residual amount of acid, that is a carboxylic acid and sulfuric acid, to produce soluble salts. This is a neutralization reaction. When the mixture is then transferred into the separating funnel, two distinct layers start to form, an organic layer at the top and a clear aqueous layer at the bottom. The aqueous layer contains all the soluble salts and alcohol, which is also soluble in water, while the top organic layer contains the ester, which is what we want to isolate. The isolation is achieved by discarding the bottom aqueous layer through the stopcock, leaving behind the organic layer. This process is repeated several times until only the organic layer remains behind in the separating funnel. After isolating the ester, it is further purified using distillation. In our previous video on boiling point of esters, we explained that esters usually have lower boiling points than alcohol and carboxylic acids. Distillation makes use of this boiling point difference. When the temperature of the mixture is raised above the boiling point of the ester, the ester evaporates, and using a condenser, it will be further returned into liquid state and collected in a separate vessel, as shown here. If you smell the distillate, that is the ester, you will recognize an aroma, and that is the most convenient way of confirming that the substance is in fact an ester. In summary, the production of esters consists of three main parts. The actual formation of the ester, by reacting in alcohol and carboxylic acid in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, heat and reflux. This is followed by the isolation of ester using a separating funnel and sodium carbonate for neutralization. When the ester is isolated, it is further purified using distillation, whereby the evaporation and subsequent condensation of the ester increases the purity of the final solution. The final solution can be finally identified as an ester by smelling and identifying the aroma or the scent of the product. While we spent most of the video discussing the production of esters, it is important to remind ourselves that this is a reversible reaction. The reaction between an ester and water produces an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, and this process is referred to as hydrolysis, hydro representing water, and lysis representing breakdown of the ester. So using a large amount of water pushes the equilibrium towards the left side to increase concentrations of the carboxylic acid and the alcohol.